O God, our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Christ child be with you, my friends, and Merry Christmas. Let us hear the sacred words of St. John's Gospel, announcing the word of God made flesh. This is John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, perhaps like me, on Christmas morning, you expect a flurry of unwrapping around the Christmas tree. Perhaps, like many others, you've got at least some happy memories of time spent seeing what Kris Kringle brought for the boys and girls on his nice list. Santa was very good to my children this year, and it's always wonderful to look into their eyes and to remember the excitement of Christmas morning that I, too, felt as a child. Musing about this as I prepared to preach to you this morning, a poem came my way from a friend, and I decided I would share it with you on this sacred morn. It goes like this. They say there's a big man who lives far away, supposedly jolly, but it's hard to say. I've never seen him, and neither have you. But the children believe, and I suppose that'll do. He's known as a loner with many a quirk. No time for a chat, he's embroiled in his work. He keeps to himself for most of the year. I reckon we're grateful he doesn't appear. We send him requests for particular needs, but we never hear back. Who knows if he heeds? We try to be good, give his arm a twist, to merit our place on his blessed little list. And maybe one day, if we do as we should, he'll give us our things just so long as we're good. But I've had it, up to here, I'm calling his bluff. He's a weird, moralistic dispenser of stuff. Granted, this rant is a strange one to pick, but you see, I'm not really after St. Nick. Because as strange as he is, and Santa is odd, I'm really addressing most folks' view of God. It's God who we see as some distant big guy, some ancient invisible Saint Nick in the sky. He sees you asleep, he knows when you wake, he's watching and waiting to spot your mistake. 
And just like with Santa, requests we hand in, we want all these things, but we just don't want him. That's our connection with old Father Christmas. We might dress it up, but it's basically business. Throughout the year, good behavior's our onus. When Christmas rolls round, we're expecting our bonus. Just leave us our gifts, Nick. We've been good enough. And then please push on, now we've got all our stuff. I mean, Santa is interesting, curious, quirky, but nobody wants him to sit down for turkey. I'm sure his ho-ho-hos are sublime, but I fear what he'll say once he's drunk all my wine. That's old Saint Nick, but the picture rings true. It's what we imagine that God is like too. But Christmas resounds with a stunning, not so. The one from on high was born down below. To a world much in need, he did not send another. Because God the Son became God our brother. He drew alongside forever to dwell our God in the flesh. Emmanuel. This God in the manger upends all our notions, a heavenly stooping, a divine demotion. Born in a stable, wriggling on straw, fully committed to life in the raw. Santa gives things and then goes away. Jesus shows up to befriend and to stay. Santa rewards us for good behavior. Jesus draws near to the broken as Savior. If you don't much like God, I think I know why. You probably think he's Saint Nick in the sky. You're right to reject that odd faraway stranger. But this Christmas, look down for God in the manger. I hope you get the same enjoyment out of that poem that I do. I found it fun and also poignant. Friends, on this Christmas day, we remember that God could have come wrapped in glory and splendor and light and power to instill fear, to make our eyes wide with amazement. But instead, he came as the smallest the frailest, weakest of beings. And why? So that no one would be ashamed to approach him. So that no one would be afraid. So that all would be close to him and draw near to him. So that there would be no distance between him and us. God plunged dove deep within our condition so that each of us could speak intimately with him, trust him, draw near him, and realize that he loves us with an everlasting love. God chose to become one of us in order to show us how much he loves us. And if you understand that simple declaration, you will have understood the whole gospel. God became one of us in order to show us how much he loves us. And so we will love him in return. This Christmas feast is a celebration of that love, God's love for us and our love for God in Jesus Christ. And we are meant to carry that love with us in our hearts. Christmas, even if we mark all 12 days with reverence and joy, is after all only a short time of rejoicing, just a small part of the year. But after this brief period, we have a decision to make. We can take down the tree and throw out the wrapping paper and pay our bills and wait for the party to begin again next year. Or we can take the cause of our Christmas celebration and carry it with us throughout the rest of the year, indeed, throughout the rest of our lives. 
Because you see, friends, what gives us cause for rejoicing at Christmas is God with us, Jesus, our Emmanuel, God incarnate, enfleshed, one of us, God vulnerable, as vulnerable as any infant, God poor, God a refugee, God subject to the whims of tyrants. The cause of our celebration is the fact that God so thoroughly loves us that he shared our condition and didn't shrink from any of what that meant. Had God willed it, he could have been born a prince in a palace of stone, warm and secure and fortified against the outside world. But he chose instead an outside hovel and cold and vulnerability. God chose a poor young girl to be the God-bearer, not a queen or princess. God declared Blessed Mary highly favored by so doing showed that meekness counts for more than might. God chose a good man with a humble trade in a backwater town to raise his son, not a king or an emperor. God chose blessed Joseph and by so doing showed that decency and hard work count for more than rank and riches. Jesus's ministry announced good news to the poor to the outcasts, to sinners. Jesus healed the sick and opened the eyes of the blind. Jesus was a friend of women, a defender of children. Jesus bore the weight of our sins and sorrows and freely gave himself up to death on the cross for our redemption. And rising from the dead gave us the promise of eternal life. The cause of our celebration at Christmas is the incomparable gift of God with us, with us in all of our humanity, in all of our joys and sorrows. And when our brief season of rejoicing is over, it is this gift of faith that gives us cause for celebration at all times. It is this gift of faith that lasts. And with that gift, we are called to move out into the world, to see that the goal of our life is not to build up as much safety and comfort around ourselves as possible, but to follow the path our Savior has trod, to go with him to the dark places of vulnerability and hurt and sin, and there to bring his healing and his light. We rejoice today but the much greater, far greater celebration comes with a life lived in service to others in the name of Jesus. There's still much work to be done in building God's kingdom. Friends, I was reminded, as I often am at this time of year, of the words of Howard Thurman, the great African-American theologian and civil rights leader who wrote this. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, make music in the heart. It's Howard Thurman. And so my friends, this season we rejoice knowing that there is work yet to be done. And with the gift of the Christ child, God with us, we pledge ourselves to his service, carrying with us always the cause of our celebration, knowing that the service of the Lord is perfect freedom and in God's service, joy that never ends. And God bless you. Amen. in the winter snow.
Let us pray to our Lord Christ, saying, In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom there was no room in the inn, give courage to all who are homeless. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, who fled into Egypt, give comfort to all refugees. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, who fasted in the desert, give relief to all who are starving. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, who hung in agony on the cross, give strength to all who suffer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Jesus, by being born one of us and lying humbly in a manger, you show how much God loves the world. Let the light of your love always shine in our hearts until we reach our home in heaven and see you on your throne of glory. 
Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. May Christ, by his incarnation, gathering all things in heaven and on earth into one, fill you with joy and peace. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.